thinking of deleting these lights completely. We don't have light anymore and using an HDRI image to light our scene. And to do that, let's get a skylight and set the source type from captured scene to specific cube map. Now we can go to a website like HDRI Haven and download something we like. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I got this HDRI from HDRI Haven. I would like to import to Unreal Engine this one, this one, and maybe try this one. Let's double click the asset and check what can we do here. So we need to make sure it's set to HDRI. Click and drag the image and set it on the cube map in the skylight. Now you can see its reflection. If we set to static, we won't see the reflection. In stationary, we can, for some reason. And now, what we need to do to see the effect completely, we need to rebuild the light. So, let's go ahead and do that. This is basically using one image, an HDRI image, to light your scenes. It's one of the fastest ways to experiment with different lighting setups. Using one HDRI, we completely transformed how our scene look, and that's absolutely great. I wanna get rid of this, I don't want to use for static, so let me do that. Not for now, at least. Ah, <laughs> sometimes I make the mistake by on, of, on searching by component, not in the details. I know so many of us do this mistake too. It's funny. These reflections are so ugly, I think just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to remove the door. Let's try a different image. And let's try a less reflective surface. I'll make a duplicate of this. Ctrl W to make duplicates of uh, files. Now with the new HDRI image, let's increase the cube map resolution from 128 to something like 1024. See if you can increase the intensity. It's nice. Let's stay on one. See if we need to adjust anything in the advanced settings. So we can put indirect lighting intensity to something like four and it will help achieving more bright areas in this area here. Let's click build. The reflection is super bad because we need smaller sphere reflection captures. So this is a sphere reflection capture of a radius of 500 that covers this area. So it's slightly more accurate. So usually this is good. Ctrl Shift S to save everything and let's wait for the light build. Wow. Setting this up to a high value I think is way too bright but it's not too bad. Now, do you see the outside is completely black? It's because we need exponential height fog. Add it and you have a nice atmosphere. I have a trick, I usually put it on zero, the fog height fall off, to make it completely white outside. That's how I do it. <laughs> yes, fog is way too much, so let's reduce it like this. I like the lighting. I think it's bright because the floor also is uh, completely white. So that's 50-50. Uh, yeah. So that's how we light interiors, guys. Now you know how to light interiors with HDRI images. Directional lights. You can use the HDRI backdrop. We'll cover it later. It's also super cool. You can view your HDRI here if you like. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's finish this tutorial with exporting our test scene. You remember my test scene in 3ds Max? Let me set this to clay and let me duplicate the ceiling. Select everything, click on rename S for static and let's call it test mesh. When we look at the layers, Look what I did, Max, please. Yes, it's nice to keep things organized. We simply now 
isolate selection like this, if you press Shift E, in my case, it's a shortcut I have to export selected. Let's make a new folder, call it test and save it as datathmath file. If you don't have datathmath on your machine, go watch my older tutorial. Now in Unreal Engine, let's go to projects and make a new project, call it lighting tests. Make a new folder, call it maps and make a new folder, call it DT, datathmath. Keep things organized. Datathmath, select our file and click open. Let's navigate to our file, set everything to 64. But before doing this, I forgot to make a new map. So let's make a new map and call it map, creative name. Let's save selected because when we import a datathmath file, it's going to place it in the scene for you. So I don't want things to overlap. That's why. And I like how Unreal save the last selected folder for you. I just want the geometry. Import. We can't see anything because it's too dark. But this is our place. To get some light, let's go to Skylight and navigate to our HDRI images. And let's select um, this image. Set it first from SLS captured scene to specific cube map. I click and drag. Or you can click here or you can search for it here. There are so many ways to add things. What we need to do is to build the light. You can switch between modes by pressing on these shortcuts, by the way. Alt 2 is wireframe, Alt 3, Alt 4. And you can customize these just like I showed you on the last tutorial. We use LED when we want to see the final result and LED just to see the true color of every texture or, or any color we have so it's unlit without the lighting affecting our texture or colors in any way in brush mode it's just wireframe oh look at that wow this is super nice let's add some exponential height fog and let's set this to zero so let's remove the black outside. To do that, we need to add the exponential height fog and the atmospheric fog. Click and drag. Nice. But usually I like to add both. What I also like to do is to add the post-process volume. Again, go to exposure. Set these numbers the same. So the reason I we set them the same so we, they don't auto-correct the exposure. So now when you go outside, you see how the exposure is adapting the eye. And now it's too dark inside and now we need to wait right i don't want this the simplest way to do this to avoid this just setting this number the same number and then increase this value to something like three or four well first of course we need to make it uh, global from the post process volume settings click on infinite extent unbound let's remove the lens flare Set their intensity to something like 0.2 and their size to something like 15. And now it's like more subtle. Maybe 0.1. That's nice. I'm gonna increase the intensity of my skylight and I'm going to increase the resolution to like 1024. I use this kind of rooms to see how my lighting will look like. I will give you an example. I will set this cube to something like 32 and this wall 2K. I would like to take a walk inside this apartment or if we can call it apartment. So let's go to add new and you can add a future or content pack. You can add a first person or a virtual reality. This is amazing. You can add so many things here. So if you don't choose a template on the start of the project, you can choose a template from here every time. So add it to your project. And now to experience this, we need to click on play. So now when we click play, nothing happens. Right? There is just camera floating. We want to walk in first person mode. To do that, we need to go to world settings and game mode override, set it to first person game mode. Now this is here because we added the template. And now when we click play, we will fall off the ground because we don't have a blocking volume. Forever. So we need to press escape. <laughs> If you're lost like this, you can click somewhere, click F. To add blocking volume, go to place actors and search for blocking volume. And now press G, put it on the floor and let's extend it. 
something like this. That's nice. Imagine doing exterior renders. We will do that soon, by the way. It's similar fashion, guys. So if you have exterior project, export it with data math and have some fun with it. Now let's build the light. But before we do that, let's click play. And you see, everything is awesome. Uh, everything is turning to this material because now we are in lighting only mode. Remember, I told you why I love twin motion. What twin motion does, they have material functions that you don't have to go back to max, select everything, and then like click, yes, please give me UVW map of uh, one meter by one meter. I have a script for this. No, it's not working. You see, that's what I mean. And instead of doing this and sending this back again to to Unreal to solve this problem, you can use twin motion materials. So let's go to any material we can measure. A grid? No. Yeah, let's choose concrete. So now concrete, when we click and drag any material, it will always have consistent size over all surfaces because they got some nice material functions. And what I mean with material function is the UVs for this map, you can change these from here and material parameters, but we'll get there. So you can change the tiling. It's consistent everywhere. And what I mean with material function is these guys. When you open a material editor and you see one of these uh, blue guys, they're called material functions. And you can double click a material function to go to see, uh, like, okay, UV, UV, this kind of stuff, please do this and that. So this is a material function inside material function. There are, there are two material functions inside the material function and this stuff. Now it's like inception, right? So double click this material function and it have even more stuff inside it. And I'm like, holy shit. And it has even more material functions, right? <laughs> Why we do this? Why material functions? Well, imagine everything, all these nodes, in the material editor, all these nodes are like here. You see how, how Teddy is this? Uh, that's a material function. So that's why I love Twin Motion for setting this up for us for free. You can get it now on the Unreal Marketplace. I will leave a link in the description. So now let's just give everything concrete. We don't really care. Just select everything and let's give it. I don't like this material. So let's try a different material. Sorry. Control Shift D you're good, right? So pay attention to shortcuts. Shortcuts are nice. If you want to assign the material to all these static meshes and you wonder why I can't assign a material because you have two types of actors in your world are selected. These static meshes and this data math scene actor. So we need to deselect this, press control and click on the actor. And now we have all selected actors are from the same type and now we can assign the material. I like this. So now, before we click on build the light, let's set it on production and let's open this base light mass any file. Go down and go here. So do you see the firefly clamping threshold? This is set to 1000. Now if we set it to something like 10, this should disappear. This uh, artifact. Let's set on high settings, save it, close it, click on build. I will see you guys after it finishes. All right, so there we go. What's this light? 